Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. It is a very exciting final video. This year really is the year of last and this is my last uni-centered Q&A. It's the end of an era really. Over the past six years I have gotten so many uni questions and it seems to be a very common popular topic in my DMs and on my YouTube videos and from what I can tell it's one of the biggest reasons a lot of you follow me. I think that's because most of our demographic is in this age where a lot of us are either at uni or doing our careers or whatever um, and so a lot of you are just like in the same life stage as me. I thought one last time I would ask on my Instagram if you had any uni related questions and I just sit down and answer them for you in today's video. It really is the end of an era and I'm very excited about it um, and I'm very excited to move on from this year and get this year done. I just want to finish everything. Yes, really looking forward to leaving the study chapter behind because I have been at uni since 2017. Oh my god, this is my seventh year at university. Oh my god. Seven years? I, I literally only realized that. I've been saying six. Seven just seems a bit extreme, doesn't it? Hmm. And I'm not a doctor. Interesting. Normally I do my Q&As as like a coffee catch up, but I've already had my coffee today and I needed to have some breakfast. So this is a brekkie catch up. And my idea for these Q&As is to like have this sit down time where you can sit down and do the same thing and we just feel like we're catching up if that makes sense. So feel free to watch this while you're having breakfast or having a meal or have your coffee and we can catch up on all things uni related. I'm still kind of processing how long I've been at uni for. <laughs> still not done yet, but after this year, I will not be back. Mark my words. I'm getting my lip gloss all over that. All right, I'm just gonna scroll through these questions and just like pick them apart. What degree do you have? So I have two degrees. I have a Bachelor of Justice majoring in Criminology and Policing and I have a Bachelor of Behavioral Science which is Psychology. So I have two Bachelor degrees under my belt. What are you studying? Does it have anything to do with social media slash marketing? No it doesn't. Um, I'm currently studying my Masters in Teaching so I'm specializing in Primary and yeah this is my final year of that degree so it was a two year degree full time finished last year did full time and I was gonna drop back to part time this year but I actually decided after having a couple of months off that I just wanted to get it done and I want this chapter of my life to be over so I'm just gonna power through this year and kind of take a slightly different approach to what I have been and be less studious stressy if that makes sense like I'm not here to get straight sevenths I'm here to pass <laughs> so yeah that's kind of where I'm at with that. Is online better for you? Is it easier to concentrate? I have done probably half of my uni studies online. I started online when the pandemic happened and like everyone was kind of forced online and I kind of just like stuck it out because we were going in and out of lockdowns and stuff and we all just kind of stayed online because we didn't need to be on campus. So that kind of started things for me and then my social anxiety got very bad during COVID um, and all of the lockdowns and stuff as it did for a lot of people but I really struggled with my social anxiety and it was very hard to move from being online back to in person. I've spent a lot of time with my psychologist working on my social anxiety. For me and my jobs and my career online is just really easy to tailor uni around my work. I guess. I don't have a very like blanket standard scheduled week if that makes sense. Uh, every week is different. Varying commitments. I've always been working on a casual basis so my shifts change and yeah it just was a lot easier for me to still be able to work and work multiple jobs whilst still studying um, and do it all online because then I can kind of do things at my own pace. A lot of stuff um, is kind of just like published especially I found in my master's because a lot of master's students are working, have families, have a lot of other commitments. So it's a little bit more flexible, I guess, compared to studying online in my bachelor. But yeah, I just find it works better for me and my schedule. In saying that though, this year I am going to try and go into campus um, and do a little bit more on campus stuff. Uh, I'm assuming as though it's my final year, I'm going to romanticize my final year and just try and enjoy it as much as I can, even though I really don't enjoy uni. But since I've worked on my social anxiety, I feel like 
I can kind of do a bit of a blend. How do you feel about graduating? Excited or anxious? A bit of everything. I think I'm going to be a bundle of emotions <laughs> at the end of the year. I'm more so excited now. Like I really just want to get it done and get it under my belt. I think I'll be really, really proud of myself at the end of the year, knowing that I got through it. Um, because if you know, you know, my master's has been the most challenging thing, 100% that I've ever done. Last year was my worst year and that was for a bunch of reasons, but uni stress was huge for me. I had a bit of an identity crisis. I was really struggling with the master's load and it's just, it's been the most challenging thing I've had to do. I didn't expect it to be as hard as it was. So I kind of got lost last year, have found myself a little bit, but I just want to get it done. And I know having it under my belt, I'll feel so relieved, I guess. So yeah, I'm going to be super proud of myself and super excited to just have it done and not have to think about uni again because it's a drag. <laughs> but at the same time, I still don't have that set place that I know that I'm going. I have career aspirations, of course, and I have passions and I have things that I'd really like to do, but I know that that's going to be really challenging to get there. And there's going to be a few hurdles to get there still career wise. Very nervous still to see where next year takes me and kind of what I do after all of this, because it's not certain. Have you started applying for jobs related to what you're studying? I currently work multiple jobs. I keep a lot of my work life offline. I think I've just become a little bit more private in the last like six months. I don't know why. I just kind of happen. I want to keep some things off the internet. Work just happened to be one of those things. Um, but I work from home and I do like admin stuff. I'm pretty happy doing that at the moment. Um, and then I also am lucky enough to do a bit of social media stuff. And yeah, adding a third role into that just doesn't really make sense for me right now. Um, and mentally, I don't want to burn myself out like I did last year. I was running myself very thin and just like constantly dragging myself through the mud. So I'm not doing that this year. Um, I did apply for jobs for maybe two months. Um, in education um, and none of those kind of became fruitful. So yeah, I'm just kind of like keeping it chill at the moment and juggling my other jobs. And yeah, towards the end of the year, I'll start applying for next year. Do you have a specific position that you want to work in a school like counselor, etc.? Counseling would be pretty cool. I'm definitely more interested in the well-being, mental health side of education. That's where my passion is. Um, my bachelor's in psychology. So I'm really hoping that my behavioral science and my master's in education can kind of complement each other and will be really valuable to the school setting in whatever way that is. But yeah, I'm definitely more interested in nurturing student well-being. And I don't know, I can see myself as like a dean of well-being or uh, like a well-being counselor or something along those lines. But also I think would be really awesome to do mental health intervention programs and stuff that go into schools. That's where my passion is as well. So yeah, that's kind of the vibe rather than like straight teaching, if that makes sense. It's just kind of part of the puzzle, I think. <laughs> Tips on how you balance uni, work, health, mental and physical. I've got a few questions about balancing everything. I think the cool thing is you can go back and watch uni weeks in my life and see how it's changed over the past six, seven years. For me, I've learned a lot about balancing and balance is such a big key factor in what I want to do with my year this year and something I need to be really mindful of because I've been through periods where my social life has dropped off the back burner. Last year for me, that's kind of what happened. I was still social, but it wasn't intentional being social, if that makes sense. So yeah, my aim for this year is to be a lot more balanced. And in that, I think it just takes a bit of trial and error to know what works for you. Because when I first started uni, I had no idea. You had to figure these things out for yourself and what someone else is doing isn't going to work for you. So my friends were doing all different things and I was like, maybe I should be doing that. Maybe I should try that. And I tried a whole bunch of things. Some of them didn't work. Some of them did. So I just had to really align my values and see what worked for me. I know that working full-time and studying full-time is not an option. Some people do it and each to their own, but I know that that's going to cause me burnout. So I didn't take that route. So yeah, I just think it comes down to evaluating your priorities and no matter how busy I am, I feel like I can always work in things that I want to do. I'm one of those people that think like I don't have time is a bit of a cop out. 
because if you want to do it, you make time for it. And I've always stood by that. Like if you want a relationship and you're really busy, you make it work if that's what you want. It's just where your priorities are, I guess. Like for me, um, exercise and training is a huge, you know, must for me. And I have to work that into my schedule and make the time for it because I know that's what's going to make me feel good and ultimately stop me from feeling burnt out because I'm exercising and I'm looking after my health. So yes, there's not really a set answer to that. Uh, but I think, yeah, just working out where your priorities are, time blocking, managing your schedule, planning ahead. Prior preparation is key. Meal prep, day prep, like just get stuff organized and sorted and learn to be an organized person if you want to balance all of your commitments. Are you dreading your final placements as much as me given the last one? <laughs> oh, placements is a whole situation for me. I'm not even going to talk about last year's, but my last placement did not go well. It was okay, but I got stuck with a very challenging mentor. We didn't really gel and I questioned whether she was there for the right reasons. And yeah, it was just a whole thing. Um, and it was really, really stressful, unbelievably stressful month for me. I cried every day before and after. I had to like reach out to my uni and everything because I just was not coping with the dynamic there. Um, so yeah, I've got two placements this year. One of them's four weeks, one of them's five weeks. And I am so nervous. Yes, that is a big anxiety block for me. I believe I'll get through them, but it's just, yeah, it's going to be extremely challenging for me, I think. Um, but I'm really hopeful that my uni pulls through and my next one is a lot better and I learn off them a lot more because yeah, I feel a little bit behind having the experience that I did first off the bat. Yeah, look, we'll see what happens. Hopefully my uni pulls through. They're pretty good with support. Um, so I don't know, we'll see <laughs> what happens, but yeah, I'm nervous. Best tips for prac during the semester and balancing assignments during your prac. I am very lucky in that my uni has scheduled our classes around placement. So um, for some of my classes, we don't have classes or assessment and stuff during our placement blocks, if that makes sense. So yeah, during placement, we just have placement to worry about normally. In saying that though, I had a very challenging last year where I had like six subjects overlapping and that kind of led into placement. So that was a lot in itself. I don't think that's normal or it shouldn't be normal. Preparation again for prac and just being as organized as possible beforehand, uh, making sure you've got really good links with your uni um, and use them as much as you can. I remember our support person at uni that like we helped us with our placements she was really good checked in on me a lot um was constantly emailing her and stuff so yeah and i think also giving yourself a little bit of care being patient with yourself too and knowing that your normal routine will be out of whack for a certain amount of time and that's okay that's what i tried to do and really helped me in my last placement even things like exercising like training six days a week wasn't completely doable for me because I was so emotionally exhausted and my body just didn't really need the extra stress and that was okay. I went on lots of walks, but I wasn't lifting heavy and going to all of my cardio classes and whatever, but it's only a couple of weeks of your whole life. Like it's okay. You just got to do the best you can. Did you know what you wanted to do straight out of high school? Absolutely not. If you do want to hear more about that, I have other like uni Q and A's from the past couple of years and uni videos where I talk about it a little bit more, but basically straight out of uni, I started at a different uni doing speech pathology. Didn't want to do that. Um, I did like half a semester of it and was like, no, nah, that's not for me. So after the first semester, I changed unis and changed degrees. I actually started doing my justice degree first um, because I don't think you could do psychology mid-year. I'm pretty sure. And then the following year I picked up psychology. So then I kind of started the dual degree. That's kind of how it happened, but I figured it out as I went. I just kind of did the dual degree because those were two things that I was passionate about and I was really interested in and I was good at. So yeah, that's kind of what led me to do that. It wasn't like, I know I want to be a physio, so I'm going to study physio. Everybody is different. And I think it's important to remember everyone's timeline and journey is going to be very, very different. So 
try not to compare yourself to other people. What age did you start studying? I was 17, straight out of high school, went straight from year 12 to uni. How do you set yourself up for the uni semester? I have a video on that. I brought you guys along for preparing for this year and I will pop a link to that in the description in case you missed that and want to check it out. But I also have heaps of other uni videos. So yeah, scroll back over the last couple of years and there's heaps of organizational videos, class timetabling, uni notes, all that kind of stuff. So hopefully you find that helpful. Tips for land test numeracy. Honestly, just think like my biggest piece of advice would be it's not as scary as it's made out to be. If you know that you've got weaknesses in those areas, study them, of course, especially maths. Like if you're revising some of the concepts and there's a few things you've kind of forgotten since school that happened to me, I was like, oh, I'm not very good at these two areas. I've kind of forgotten what to do. So I went through and I studied them for a good couple of weeks beforehand, maybe six weeks, and just slowly started doing more and trying to get my head around it. Do some of the practice tests, do some NAPLAN tests and focus on your weaknesses and you'll be fine. Honestly, it was not as scary as I felt like everyone made it out to be. I was really stressed for mine and I guess I just studied what I wasn't good at and focused on that. Honestly, just do your best because it was not as bad as it was hyped up to be. Also, is it just me or does Canva suck? I'm really not a fan. I like haven't had enough time to get used to it, but the Canvas platform that my uni does is just, I don't know, I don't like change. And I've only got a year left and I really don't feel like I have the energy to get to learn something new, but I'm obviously gonna have to. Tips for when you have loads of assignments due at the same time. Preparation and organization really is key in uni. Start them as soon as you can. I lay all of my assignments out so I know when they're due. I know what I need to be working on first. I know what's bigger than the others. Um, and honestly, just start working on them as soon as you can. Even if it's just researching or getting your head around a topic or making some notes on topics. So I'll just kind of do like little chunks of assignments earlier on, like whether that's researching, getting ideas, getting sources together or getting a bit of a plan going as soon as you can. So you can start thinking about it and start formulating the assignment as soon as you can and do it like, you know, if you've got a six hour uni day, adding another hour and a half on the bottom just to work on some assignment work or something like that. I think that's really helpful and really important, especially when you've got a big study load. How to get through placement. Friends, socializing, having things to look forward to on the weekends. Um, and as I said, being kind to yourself and having that downtime, having time to treat yourself and go and do little pampery things and relax. Um, and yeah, not putting so much pressure on yourself to like, do your normal full out routine because it is extremely draining. You are going to a workplace to prove yourself every single day and it's just very mentally and physically draining. So yeah, being as kind to yourself as possible I think is important. Can you work and do placement at the same time? I recommend not. I never did in my bachelor or um, my masters. I have had work off and I think that's the most beneficial thing for me. I was obviously in a place where I could do that um, and I kept up my social media stuff. So I did have some form of an income, I guess, in saying that everyone is in a different situation. So you kind of just have to do what's best for you. But for me personally, I couldn't have worked, um, especially like I was at school at like seven o'clock in the morning, coming home from school at five, 5.30. So I had no time during the week to work. And on the weekends, I was so exhausted that I just like needed the time to catch up on things that I'd missed out on and regain a little bit of energy to go again the next week. I was doing all the readings necessary. Controversial, I know I should be here leading by example, but I'm gonna say no. In some respects it is, like especially in my bachelor, it was very research heavy. So I did do most of the readings, but I never found it attainable to do all of them, especially in their masters. There's like 10 plus readings for each subject. I don't know anyone who has time to do that. Like it would be great if we did, It'd be great if I could knock back a couple hours of sleep, but I would rather prioritize skim reading, doing summaries and getting the general gist and also still living my life. Because at the end of the day, I'm human first, a student second. Um, and I think that's something really important for me to remember that, you know, I don't need to be the best at everything. I don't need to do absolutely every little piece of work that they set out for me because 
it's just not really attainable. I work smarter, not harder. How do the placements work? Do you do them each year? So for me and my master's, I know the bachelor is different, but for me, we have four semesters, obviously full time. And three out of those four semesters, we have placement. So um, at my uni, the first one was three weeks three and a half weeks the next one is four weeks and the final one is five weeks so I've got my four and five week placements this year in April and I think it's July or August so yeah that's kind of how it works for us um, but yeah a master's is a bit more fast-tracked than the bachelor degree so I think maybe the bachelor degree might be smaller placement chunks but more of them I really don't know but yeah that's just how my master's has worked for me advice for starting out if you're starting out at uni um firstly good luck I honestly do feel like uni is a place that some people can thrive but I think it's important to also note that it is not for everybody and that's totally fine. In saying that, yes, I have been at uni for a really long time, but I don't thrive in that environment. The decision to study was not something that I took lightly. I think just being yourself um, and being more confident than you think you are, I know that that was something that really helped me in my bachelor degree um, to make friends. You just kind of have to fake it a little bit and take it for what it is because every phase of life is going to be so different. So try and enjoy studying and being a uni student as much as you can. And the final question I'm going to answer in this video is how to deal with the anxiousness surrounding being a high achiever because this is something that I really struggled with. I came from a private school School that was very high achieving you needed to be a high achiever to be seen and to do well I don't know it was just very heavy emphasis on doing well and achieving academically and I also came from a family of high achievers I had a pretty big benchmark that I felt like I had to meet and it's something that I've always struggled with I've struggled with being a bit of a perfectionist and trying to meet these really high standards that I've had and that followed me into uni where I felt like I needed to be the best at everything and I wasn't because when you first start at uni there's so much to navigate and it's a totally different world so yeah you really have to learn the ropes I guess and for me anyway getting straight sevens wasn't attainable. I have had to do a lot of work on myself and my perfectionism and all of that kind of stuff to be able to allow myself to just do my best and be so okay with that and so happy that I've just given something my best rather than you know being bummed because I was two marks off a six or a seven or whatever. Marks have now become not as important to me and it's the effort that I put in. I need to know that I'm putting in as much effort as I possibly can into all of those assignment pieces which I do and I back myself on that also if I get a four out of that or if I get a seven out of that I'm just proud that I've done the work and I've done the best job I felt that I could do at the time my mental space is worth looking after more than getting grades and stuff like nobody cares about your grades nobody's looking at your grades um, uni is very individualized. It's something that you just kind of have to work on within yourself. But that is all the questions that I am going to answer today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little uni catch up. Um, for any of you guys that are currently studying, I hope they're going well and I'm wishing you all the best. And for anyone graduating this year, let's do it. Final year vibes let's go. I will be vlogging a lot of my uni stuff and yeah there'll be a lot of uni content this year so I hope you're excited to come along with me for my final year of my master's and yeah finish off this studying chapter of my life. But thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys. Thank you for the support and I will see you in my next video very soon. Bye guys!